Poison Hound the Spidey Bay. Poison Hound the Spidey Bay. Poison, 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 poison. Poison Hound the Spidey Bay. Spidey rules. Poison Hound the Spidey Bay. Use blinking to extend combos. Poison, 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 poison. Poison Hound the Spidey Bay. Mission starting in T minus 10 seconds. Poison around this body, What's going on, guys? It's Poison Hound here. I hope you guys are having a great day. Today, I'm coming at you guys with a cool collab video I'm doing with Cami Player. Please check them out. Their links will be in the description along with the pinned comment below. So, on my channel, I'm just going to do a subjective tier list. That's a, you know, big thing for you guys to remember. If you want a more objective tier list, I would say there's some out there with the pro players and how they, like, you know, see the game as a pro player. So, I would say check those out. Um, but, yeah, this is a subjective tier list with me and Cami Player. And on their channel, they will have a modded tier list of how the modded characters fare on the base roster. So basically this tier list with modded characters in mind. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Please make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on the upload. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this video. Down the line is just easier, I think. Yeah, we can go ahead and do that. Um, I mean, then we're going to have to get into some uh, conversation with who we think is uh, top tier. In your opinion, who do you think is top five for the normal game? Uh, well, definitely Virgil. Unfortunately, <laughs> if you if you say Virgil is not, I'll, you're gonna blow my mind. I would say Virgil's really good. He has a lot of good options. One thing that Virgil does suffer against is that he gets lamed out very easily when he doesn't have meter. But when does that ever happen? You know. Um, so I think it's a pretty fair pick. But I would also say maybe zero is above. Yeah, I was Virgil, I was gonna say zero. zero. So yeah. Because if you get task level of precision, or well, task being uh, tool assisted, uh, if you get like that level of precision, like Jabril, you know our most recent Evo e Evo winner, uh, you know zero. I feel like zero is better. Uh, and then a close second, I would arguably say it would be Morgan. You just can't not understand how good she is as a character, especially with her ability to meter dump with her astral vision. I do think, don't get, don't get me wrong, I do believe that Virgil is top five, but I do feel like there's some contenders for who is better than him. Um, there's not many, but there, there's there's just a couple. Maybe Dante? Uh, and then, I do know Magneto and Nova are pretty good. Uh, I do feel like Nova needs to, you need to take into account his simplistic uh, inputs and compare it to how effective he is as a character. Not only that, there's also obvious uh, choices like Spencer. So just for now, I feel like it's Zero, Morgan, Phoenix. Phoenix is big. We can't be forgetting her. Oh, I, I completely forgot about be... Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix is good, but it's she's just an expensive gimmick. Like, you have to kind of know what you're doing. And if you don't, then you're not going to be very successful. But then again, in the same breath, the other, char the, the other character, the other player needs to also know what they're doing. Some people don't even know you can snap characters back. So All right, fair enough. And then I, there... I guess we have uh, under there Magneto, Sarah, mm -hmm. right? And um... Nova? Nova's Nova, 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 yeah, yeah. Dante, you can arguably say that he isn't, like, super... Like, he can't steamroll teams. We have to all honestly understand and take that into consideration that Dante is just a huge powerhouse when it comes to his support. He does a lot. He has TAC infinites. He has a great assist. He has great DHCs. There's just a lot of things that Dante offers a lot of teams, and that just can't be understated. Uh, just someone that also comes to mind is Dr. Doom. Dr. Doom is just probably the best oh, support, geez. in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, cheap. Those missiles support. are so cheap. I hated it so much. Every single but... assist. There's very little characters that have all good assists. Like, you could have rocks to kind of go against a, an opposing beam. You know, you could have a beam to fight uh, longer assists like uh, I think bol like bolts. You can fight that or, or like just a counter call. And just uh, hidden missiles is also great. So with that being said, we have two slots available. 
Um, and these next two slots, uh, I'm trying to see what we can possibly hook. We can uh, possibly Sentinel? Is Sentinel, Sentinel not good? Level, Sentinel is good. I feel like he has a great assist and he has great X Factor potential. But um let me see. I mean I guess we can put Sent I mean Sentinel, I would say he's a high mid tier, if anything. I'm trying to think of other characters. I I, I definitely feel like Modoc has justified his space in the top ten just because of the amount of uh Modoc like, is crazy such a things Modoc can do. Crazy characters, like has to be someone insane to play Modoc. And it, uh, this is huge barrier of skill, and then when you cross the barrier, it's like, wow. And Spencer, I think we for sure we need to throw in Spencer. I am really Bionic Assist character, or a character that is a damage engine. And then for A tier, I think we should boot it off with maybe Modok, just because of like the level of cool things you can do with him. I feel like maybe you can make the argument dormammu just because of the uh, dormammus have been making names you know noel brown has been doing great um you also have jason kiddo you have a lot of players that have been doing really good with dormammu so in a tier we have modok dormammu and i feel like the i'm, I feel like I'm waiting for you to say akuma at some point yeah i think uh akuma's really good i feel like he would be the highest B tier, maybe. I feel like that makes like the most sense for that. Right, let, let's so let's, let's put him there. Let's set it in stone then. Uh... Yeah, uh, I put uh, for my A tier Modok, Dormammu, Wolverine, and then after that, I'm gonna put Akuma at the top of B tier just so we can fill out some of these slots. Yeah. And then uh, A tier. Who else do we have left over that is a pretty good character? I don't think Frank West is A tier. I would say maybe he's second of B tier. Just because Frank West is really good in teams, especially when you level him up. But that's a big if. He's one of those gimmicks in Marvel 3. So also got to be aware of that. Oh my god, we forgot Deadpool. <laughs> so I think Deadpool should also be uh, maybe after Wolverine. Um, so A tier is going to be Modok, or Mamu, Wolverine, and Deadpool. Deadpool's really good, especially with the zoning and running away. Yeah. yeah. And then I do... I have been messing with Wesker recently. I just don't know where to put him. Yeah, so I think maybe we can put Wesker after Deadpool and then let's let's put Viper because I think Viper is also a really good character in the front of A tier. Chris is a really good all-rounder all, all character. I feel like Chris is probably maybe at the beginning of B tier because... Hey, we, we reached one of my characters. Yeah, yeah, uh, Chris is really good, especially with the zoning. And then I think we should put Hagar in between Modok and Dormammu because I feel like Hagar is also a really good character. Just can't not understand how good it is to Plink, especially in Marvel 3. That just transforms Hagar to just a crazy, crazy character. Maybe Spider-Man can be in front of Frank West like the third of B tier, just because I feel like if you run away from Frank, Frank struggles. But he does, uh, Spidey does struggle from everyone above him. Like he struggles against Chris of all people, Akuma, and then Wesker, Deadpool, all those characters he usually struggles with. But I think with good planks, you can make your way in. Let's go ahead and put Strider. Really? I'm, I'm quite and surprised because I, I still, Sentinel, still Sentinel, Sentinel, Storm. A storm isn't that good. She's good at stalling and zoning, and her super just kills assists. So maybe that can also bump her up. Maybe I would put her in front of Spider Man. So my B tier is looking like Chris, Akuma, Storm, Spider Man, and Frank West. And then we have Sentinel. Sentinel. Maybe we can put him. Uh, I don't even know. Cause do you think Sentinel can beat? Strider, or I think I don't even know if Sentinel can beat Chris. I mean, we do understand that that incoming hard drive is good because you can avoid a lot of things and let Sentinel be an X Factor 3 character. So maybe we can arguably say he is, let me see where, either in front of Spider Man or on the right of Spider Man. I feel like Doctor Strange is also a good character. Depending on who you ask, he might even be an A tier. Yeah, I, um, I honestly had the impression that he was uh, ranked higher. He's, uh, we can definitely rank him higher. I feel like he does have a lot of uh, utility and a lot of great assists. 
He has two really good assists, the, the Bolts and also the Eye of Agamotto. So if anything, we could also put him, I would say maybe, because I think he beats everybody in front in B tier, so probably put him on, in the front of B tier. I feel like he does beat Chris. That's more like it. So let's just go ahead and just pick a random person like Ryu, right? Ryu, I feel like he could be at C tier, like <laughs> the beginning of C tier. And then we have, I think maybe Chun-Li is also down there in C tier. And then who else do we have here that maybe doesn't belong in the lower tiers? I feel like Firebrand mm. is a really good character. Captain um, America be him... around here? Yeah, Captain America is uh, more than likely high B tier just because he's very, very honest. Like, just don't be under him. <laughs> to fight him, approach him only with assists. And even if you do call assists, make sure you're at a great distance because you can punish them like badly. So I would say um, I would put Firebrand maybe after MODOK just because Firebrand doesn't really lose any point wars. He has a really good projectile and his fireball with the assist call would be great. So I'm putting uh, Firebrand on the third of A tier. And then for Captain America, I'm going to go ahead and put him maybe... I, I wouldn't say he can beat Chris, so I can say I'll put him after Chris. Between, so between be Chris and Akuma. Yes. And then after that, let's go ahead and see who else. I feel like you can put Iron Man right after, or actually before Frank West. I feel like Iron Man is a really good support character as well, especially with all the... Uh, wouldn't you put DC Hulk around DC here somewhere? Yeah, I would put Hulk probably in between uh, Sentinel and Iron Man because Hulk is pretty good. If not, maybe a bit higher. I do feel like Hulk has the better... Uh, has an edge over Spider-Man. I mean, kind of. Then again, Spider-Man can just do web balls and Hulk can't. Oh, Hulk, Hulk is, is top tier at my level of gameplay. <laughs> Between lower okay. skilled players, he is really good. Uh, but yeah, I think yeah, that's, that's, be... that's pretty fair around B for you know people who actually know what they're doing. And then we have Beautiful Joe. Just lump him in there in C tier. Maybe high C tier because of his zoning. His zoning is really, really good. So oh, is it? I actually maybe. don't know much about uh, about Joe here. Yeah, so he has the most invincible super, uh, or at least, yeah, probably the most invincible super with max speed. Not only that, he also has the ability to zone a lot. He does lack in damage, but there's a lot of ways around it. Like if you run MODOK, you can use MODOK as a damage engine afterwards, or if you run like other characters, you can do a lot, but he can charge up these boomerangs, and that is very, very bad for the person if he if he, the person knows how to play him. Um, you can actually just super jump and spam the charged version, and it's hard to move at all. So it just depends on how you, like what level of Beautiful Joe you fight, but there's definite ways for him to just do a lot of stuff. And then um, I think next we do have Trish, I think it would be good to put her maybe, um, let me think. I would put her maybe after Chris. Then again, she might beat Chris. I think she maybe she beats, this is kind of controversial. I would say, I won't lose too much sleep. Yeah, her, let's but, just put Chris, Chris, Chris Trish. Yeah. I'll be. Put her uh, second tier. Tr B, Trish, Chris, okay. All right, yeah. Uh, I would put him right after Dormammu. I feel like so Dormammu. Sounds like, fair, sounds fair. Back him up. Don't get me wrong, Hagar's in front of Dormammu, and like, you know, Hawkeye can pack up. Actually, he can't even pack up uh, Hagar, because Hagar can just take a lot of chip due to his health. But yeah, we, we'll just put Hawkeye after Dormammu. And then next we have Arthur. Arthur can be maybe bottom B tier. I don't know. Uh, right after Frank West, he has a lot of utility, but you just can't get past his... Like lack of error movement. He's a little, movement. a little weird character, right? One of those that like yeah. doesn't behave exactly. Like then again, Dormammu, uh, not Dormammu, uh, Modok is like the weirdest character. It works. Yeah, uh, let me ask about one of one of my characters here, uh, Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider is disgustingly honest. Like it's crazy. I nerfed them just with the damage because I feel like he wins a lot of point wars. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's rare where you're able to get your assist out in like in the presence of Ghost Rider because he could just smack him away. I would say maybe I would put him in front of uh, or after Beautiful Joe because I feel like Joe can probably zone him pretty good. 
but I think Ghost Rider is going to be. I mean, people say he's bottom five, but I would argue that he's just under Joe, probably. I don't. I, I don't see. I don't see many Ghost Riders in tournaments, but you know, I I like him. I think he's pretty good. Or he is pretty good. Hitting, Jacob, just man. like you said, hitting assists there to enter the field. It's pretty good. Yeah, like Jaco Man is pretty good. He and not only that, Sack Tap as well. But in both of their gameplays, you always see that they end up going for like a reset, just because of the lack of damage. But you don't see them lose neutral. That back heavy is pretty good. The Heartless Spire gets rid of a lot of projectiles, and he's very defensive, and you could just control the ground game. But if you fight a lot of people above you, you're not gonna have a lot of fun. And then let me see. We do have Ami uh, Amaterasu. We can probably put her. I I I mean, I think where maybe in between, uh maybe after Frank West. So it would be Frank West, Amy, and then Arthur, and then after that we're gonna get into our D tier. So we got Tron. I'll put Tron in D tier, and the B in the front of D tier, and then from there we can just mess around with other characters. So Tron, and then. We have Shenko as well, so we can put Shenko a after that. So AKA we Lei Lei. We say, we say Lei Lei here in this channel. I mean, you're free to say whatever you want to say, but uh, Shenko. Um, so that would still be dear, you say, right? Yeah. So Lei Lei, I feel like, is pretty good for anti zoning. Like, a lot of characters don't know how to deal with it, but it just can't get past the lack of movement. Like, it's, it's bad. Alicia, I suppose, is around here as well. Yeah, so we have Tron, Lele, and then I would say Felicia would be the front of D tier. Felicia just lacks in a lot of damage. She has great movement and uh, has solo setup and blockables, but there's also uh, the big, like, you have to understand she has no damage. Then let's go ahead and lump Jill in there in the second. Oh, poor uh, Jill. To the end. Poor Jill. Poor Jill, yeah. She, she's such a, such a hard character to use, and mm -hmm. if you can master her, she's not that good either. Yeah, unless you like throw Virgil right after her. <laughs> then maybe you can probably use her, but probably not. Uh, and then we have Phoenix Wright. Um, I'm a Phoenix Wright lover, so I'll put him at the second of D tier, because I feel like there's a lot of characters that don't know what to do. And then... Let's go ahead and go into Nemesis. Nemesis, just the lack of OTG is hard. I would put him bottom two. Oh no, I think he's better than Jill, definitely, because Nemesis has some winnable matchups, unlike Jill. So let's go ahead and put Nemesis. Well, he does have, um, I mean, I will say, um, I'm by no means an expert, he does have an OTG, it's just not very good, right? It's a super. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of characters can dodge the missile just standing, not even needing to crouch. So it just, uh, it's crazy. They just nerfed him at Nemesis. Uh, She-Hulk. Bad. Yeah, She-Hulk. Um, I would argue She-Hulk is, uh, probably before or after Tron. I'll put her before Tron just because I feel yeah. like. But, my yeah. boy Thor. He's my oh, opinion okay. of Thor as someone that doesn't really play that game very high. I really like Thor, but I think he sucks. But I just I I force myself to play because I like him. But I yeah. imagine he's not good. His health is really good. Uh, he has really good health. And believe it or not, if you... I, I don't know why I haven't tested it, but if you actually like actively chip him out and he blocks all the way up until death, he builds like two meters or something crazy like that. Like, so, I, I mean... I honestly he's good. didn't know like, that. It's just he has that much, that much amount of health. And if you're advancing guarding, you're not going to take a lot of chip. And for his entire health, even if you go against somebody that lames you out, yeah, Virgil in your second slot or even in your third, by then you'll have like a lot of meter for whoever's like left over. And not only that, he has really good zoning in my opinion. So I would put him probably uh in the top of D tier. And then for Shuma, I would arguably say either after Frank West, maybe. <laughs> uh, the assist is pretty good. The X Factor 3 oh. is pretty good. If not, maybe somewhere in C tier. So I'll just meet in the middle and say he's after Joe. Um, Super yeah. Scroll. Super Scroll. Okay, Super Scroll has probably some of the best X Factor 3 damage ever. So it, you had to take that into consideration. But uh, mainly it's just that he's an anchor. Honestly, I think I don't think he's he's a good good character standalone. I mean, there's people like Rubex that do a good job, but it's just not that many. Basis for him, um, I, I I can't see him under B tier, so I would uh, say he's somewhere in B 
tier, uh, probably before Spider Man. He has a lot of great options and high damage. Um, I mean, that's probably controversial, but yeah, I'll say he's more than likely in front of Spider Man. Um, 23? 23. Let me see what we should put her. Definitely around low tier, probably the top of C tier. Because she is a pretty good character. She has a lot of invincible like stuff, but um, she just. She just has issues with damage, and uh, I feel like uh, everyone C tier and below are are messing like having issues with damage. I'm looking at this list. I I do think Hulk deserves to be way higher. <laughs> well, we should you uh, shouldn't be losing yeah. too much sleep with that, but let's put him higher then. Yeah, okay. At, at the beginning of B tier. <laughs> at the. Be- uh, so okay. number one, number one of B tier. Yeah, n- number one on B tier. Yeah. All right. And then uh, we have. Rocket Raccoon. Rocket Raccoon, he, he's just an anchor. A lot of uh, utility, right? All the traps and stuff are pretty good. Uh, I would say all, it's something in my gut is telling me in front of Spider-Man, so I would say Rocket Raccoon could lay him Oh, Spider-Man wow. I, I'm quite surprised to see him way up there. I just feel like he offers a lot of utility. Uh, he's like a, a poor man's Morgan. He's a does kind of what Morgan does, but kind of like more defensive, I guess you can say, because of the traps and even uh, there's minis that play with him. I do know if you have a high damage character and you kill and then the the DHC is the trap, you can do forward heavy and you can put the boulder trap. So the person on incoming needs to block the super trap and the boulder trap. But the boulder trap is a overhead, so you can just do lows and that's a free unblockable uh incoming and it's it's pretty cool so there's like little things you can do with him and i feel like i would probably put him past scroll but i think scrolls like things are too good to pass up and then we have the 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 master of a uh, master master uh, the fist yeah the the mortal iron fist oh, it breaks my heart um <laughs> i i think he loses yeah it does you know now that you mention it does break my because i really like the idea of this character the whole martial arts thing. I really wish it. That's why I really wanted to play with him. Because I like the character. I wish it could work. But it didn't work for me. Yeah. So I'd put Iron Fist bottom three. Um, just, just in my opinion, I feel like he just has too much issues. So my D tier looked like Thor, Felicia, Phoenix, right? And then we have She-Hulk, Tron, Nemesis, Iron Fist, Jill, and Sienko. Or Lele. 